Hey everyone, Comic Book Reviewer here, this time reviewing on Season 5 of Cobra Kai. Now as you know, yeah, Season 5 of Cobra Kai was recently released back on September the 9th, 2022, and after going through Season 1 to 4, I was finally able to pick up Season 5 on DVD and sitting down and watch it, I would say, given the fact that, yeah, season 3 and 4 blew things out of the water, I think season 5 is just a bit at the bottom of the barrel in some places. So the premise of season 5 is meant to follow off the, the events of season 4. We see how after Cobra Kai basically have won the Hill Black Valley Tournament, we see how Silver has plans to extend the Cobra Kai dojos throughout the sort of San Fernando Valley, and we do kind of see how Daniel and Chozan have to work together to find a way to take Silver down and try to find any leads that can bring his downfall. We also do see how Miguel tries to find his father, only to learn the truth the hard way, Robbie slowly coming to terms with everything that's happened, and trying to rebuild his life again. And you do kind of see how, yeah, other characters have to deal with their own sets of problems. Like, yeah, Tori kind of now seeing the downsides of Cobra Kai, and seeing that Silver has no concern or care for anyone. We also do see how Davin Lee slowly goes into Cobra Kai, and we do kind of see how, yeah, throughout Season 5, we see how eventually Daniel, Johnny, and even Chozan form together to try and take down Cobra Kai, as well as Silver, who now runs it. I think for the most part, I think, yeah, Season 5 has its moments. Like, Robbie and Miguel slowly patching things up. You do kind of see how Robbie does everything that he can to get Kenny to see reason, and you do see him finally now learning the hard way of how much of a mess his life made. But I think there's moments where I think some things were thrown in as a bit of a plot device, or some moments feel like they were just kind of thrown in just for the storyline. Like Davin Lee joining Cobra Kai and being the sort of Kenny to Tori. You kind of see how, yeah, they're going to throw one of the characters, Mitch, kind of being this secretly with Cobra Kai, which does come out of nowhere. And you do kind of see how, yeah, we never really see Daniel or Robbie properly pack things up and just felt a little rushed. And I give it credit, like, they do kind of explain why T Terry Silver wants to extend Cobra Kai. And it kind of makes sense with this potential big tournament tournament that Daniel and Johnny and even Chosen have to work together to achieve. You really do see how they try to show the judges what their JoJo's are capable of. But the only difference was Miyagi and Eagle Fang were able to come together like a family in a unit. Well, Terry Silver was able to do it just through means of lying, cheating, manipulation and bribery. And I think for the most part, they do explain the origin of Cobra Kai and how, yeah, Sensei Kim Sa Yoon was the starting point to it. And I think they were trying to build his granddaughter, Kim Jae-in, to be the sort of anti chosen But I think they don't really do much with her character. She's only in for a few episodes. You don't really question if she's really redeemable. You don't really feel any connection with her. And she feels like a bit of a plot device. I feel like they do try to flash out... John Kreese coming to terms with everything that he's done and all the people that were there or been hurt in his life. I think for the most part, 
I give it credit like it does try to bring back some characters, like Jessica Andrews, who is basically revealed to be Amanda's cousin, and you can tell when she does explain the truth to Amanda about Terry Silver, this is her finally realising the truth. And I think it's a shame we never got Julie Price from the next Karate Kid to join up with, with Daniel, Chosen and Johnny. I think the next Karate Kid definitely deserved to be in Cobra Kai because it was the aftermaths from the first film. And I think it would have been nice to have seen her show up in her sort of motorcycle or car with Daniel saying, I see you heard. And with basically Julie to say, hey, one thing I do know, no Miyagi Do stays together. And this would have been a great choice to bring back Hilary Shrank to play Julie. And I think it's a shame too, like, it doesn't feel complete not seeing, like, past student and, and past student coming together to honour Mr. Miyagi. And I think for the most part, it really feels like they were trying to build Terry Silver to be a believable threat. But really, they just throw us this guy who has these high-tech dojos. They're not really making him into a much believable threat. And his downfall feels so quick. So I think this season definitely deserves two thumbs in the middles. It backtracks. There's moments where it's good, but feels like some characters were thrown in as plot devices, some feel out of place, and some just feel like there was a lot that could have been done. And I'm hoping Season 6 will go out much better, much like Season 3 and 4. So, Comic Reviewer here, signing out.